In this video, we will do some College Board multiple choice questions pertaining to rates of change in linear and quadratic functions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.3. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Number 1. The table gives values of the function f for selected values of x. If the function f is linear, what is the value of f at 13? In previous videos, we have learned that we can write the equation of a linear function in point-slope form if we have a point and the slope. For the point, we can pick any input-output pair. I'm going to pick 6, 2. We need two sets of input-output pairs to calculate the slope, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the slope is going to be 2 minus negative 2 over 6 minus 3. That's 4 over 3. Now we can write the linear equation in point slope form. Instead of y, I'm going to use the function name f of x. So y minus y1 becomes f of x minus the y value of 2. And then we have the slope that we just found, which is 4 over 3. And then we have x minus x. So that'll be x minus 6. This is the linear equation. To make it easier to evaluate f at 13, let's get f of x by itself by adding 2 to both sides. So f of x will equal 4 thirds times x minus 6 plus 2. f at 13 will be 4 thirds times 13 minus 6 plus 2. So f at 13 will equal 4 thirds times 7 plus 2. So f at 13 will equal 4 times 7 is 28. So this is 28 thirds plus 2. I know we need like denominators. So let's go ahead and multiply the 2 times 3 over 3. So instead of writing 2, I'm going to put 6 over 3. So this will give me the final answer because 28 plus 6 is 34. So f at 13 is 34 over 3. That's why the answer is D. Number 2. The function f is defined for all real values of x. For a constant a, the average rate of change of f from x equals a to x equals a plus 1 is given by the expression 2a plus 1. Which of the following statements is true? I notice that all of the answers are about the average rate of change and what happens when it's positive or what happens when it's increasing. Specifically, they are asking if the graph of f could be a line or a parabola. Note, parabola equals quadratic. In a previous video, we learned that f of x will be quadratic if the average rate of change is linear, and f of x will be linear if the average rate of change is constant. In the setup, we are told that the average rate of change is given by the expression 2a plus 1, which is a linear expression. Think mx plus b. So the average rate of change is linear. Since the average rate of change is linear, f of x is quadratic, meaning it is some kind of a parabola. So we've narrowed it down to either b or d, so we can forget about option a and c. Both remaining options say that f of x could be a parabola that opens up. This is another way of saying f of x is concave up. 
So the question is, under what circumstances will a function be concave up? Is it when the average rate of change is positive or when the average rate of change is increasing? Here's another chart that I have asked you to memorize in previous videos. If you have not already memorized this, pause the video and study this right now. On your next test or quiz, I want you to write this in the margin or ask your teacher for a piece of scratch paper. For this question, we need this part of the chart right here. f of x will be concave up when the average rate of change is increasing, not when it is positive. That's why the answer is D, the one that says the average rate of change is increasing. So the graph of f could be a parabola that opens up. In other words, concave up. By the way, we do know that the average rate of change is increasing because the average rate of change is given by this expression. And the 2 is the rate of change of this rate of change. In other words, the average rate of change is increasing by 2 each time. If this were a negative number, then the average rate of change would be decreasing. Number 3, the average rate of change of the quadratic function p is negative 4 on the interval from 0 to 2 and negative 1 on the interval from 2 to 4. What is the average rate of change of p on the interval from 6 to 8? First of all, here are all the x values mentioned in the setup. 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Notice that these are consecutive equal length input value intervals. We are not given any y values, but we are told that the average rate of change is negative 4 on the interval from 0 to 2 and negative 1 on the interval from 2 to 4. Remember this chart that I showed you back on problem 1. We are told that function p is quadratic. That means that the rate of change of the rate of change is constant. In other words, since p is quadratic, the average rate of change changes at a constant rate. We notice that for the first two values, the average rate of change increases by 3. That means as long as we have consecutive equal length input value intervals, the average rate of change will always increase by 3. If we increase by 3 again, the next value of the average rate of change will be 2. And if we increase by 3 again, the next value of the average rate of change will be 5. The question asks, what is the average rate of change of p on the interval from 6 to 8? And we just found that on the interval from 6 to 8, the average rate of change is 5. So the answer is C. Number 4. An object is moving in a straight line from a starting point. The distance in meters from the starting point at selected times in seconds is given in the table. If the pattern is consistent, which of the following statements about the rate of change of the rates of change of distance over time is true? These are the changes in the input values. Notice that we do not have equal length input value intervals, so we will have to actually calculate the rate of change. Here are the changes in the output values. We find that the average rate of change on each interval is 4, because 8 divided by 2 is 4, 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 20 divided by 5 is 4. Since the rate of change is constant, the rate of change of the rate of change is 0. We have narrowed it down to options A and B, both of which say the rate of change of the rate of change is 0. In options C and D, they say the rate of change of the rate of change is 4. The units will help us decide between option A and option B. Rate of change is the change in output divided by the change in input. So the units of rate of change for this problem will be meters per second. So this constant rate of change of 4 is 4 meters per second. 
What about rate of change of rate of change? And that would be meters per second per second. Right there, that tells us that the answer will be B because that's the one that has the correct units for the rate of change of the rate of change, which is meters per second per second. Option A said simply meters per second, which would be the units for average rate of change, not rate of change of the rate of change. Number five, the table gives the values of F for selected values of X. Which of the following conclusions with reason is consistent with the data in the table? Notice that all of these equations at the end are linear. Think y equals mx plus b. So all of the options are saying that f has a rate of change that can be described by a linear function. The question is, when the rate of change is linear, does that mean that f is linear? Or does that mean that F is quadratic? Remember this chart that I mentioned back in problem three? If the rate of change is linear, then F of X is quadratic. So we can eliminate options A and B. We just need to decide which of these equations gives the average rate of change for each interval. Here are the changes in the output values and here are the changes in the input values. Since we are just dividing by one each time, the average rate of change for each interval is negative three, negative one, and positive one. The input value for these rate of change functions will be the first input value of each interval. So negative two for the first interval, negative one for the second interval, and zero for the third interval. Negative two, negative one, zero. So using these input values, which of the two rate of change formulas will give us the correct values for the rate of change? Two times negative two is negative four. Two times negative one is negative two. And two times zero is zero. Two times negative two is negative four plus one is negative three. Two times negative one is negative two plus one is negative one. And two times zero is zero, plus one is one. Since the expression y equals two x plus one gives us the correct values for the rate of change, the answer is d. Number six, the function f is not explicitly given. The function g is given by g of x equals f at x plus one minus f at x. The function h is given by h of x equals g at x plus one minus g of x. If h of x is equal to negative six for all values of x, which of the following statements must be true? There is a lot going on in this problem, but the first step is that I need to make you understand that f at x plus one minus f at x is the average rate of change on the interval from x to x plus one. x and x plus one are just consecutive numbers. So this interval is something like the interval from one to two, or the interval from three to four. And f at x plus one minus f at x, again, these are just consecutive numbers. So this is like f at four minus f at three, or f at two minus f at one. Let's see what happens when we try to find an expression for the average rate of change on one of these intervals that has a width of one. So let's find an expression for the average rate of change on the interval from one to two. This would be f at two minus f at one divided by two minus one. But two minus one is just one. So this would be f at two minus f at one over one. And when you divide by one, you don't need to show that. So the average rate of change would be simply given by f at two minus f at one. Let's do one more. Let's find the average rate of change on the interval from two to three. This would be f at three minus f at two over 
3 minus 2. But as before, 3 minus 2 is just 1. So we have f at 3 minus f at 2 over 1. And we don't need to write the 1. So the average rate of change on the interval from 2 to 3 is given by f at 3 minus f at 2. So in general, any time we find the average rate of change on the interval from a to b, if a and b are consecutive numbers, then b minus a will give us 1. And the expression for average rate of change simplifies down to f at b minus f at a. So hopefully now you understand that the average rate of change on the interval from x to x plus 1 will simplify down to f at x plus 1 minus f at x. That's like f at b minus f at a. So from now on, whenever you see f at x plus 1 minus f at x, I want you to recognize that as the rate of change of f. Step 2 is to understand that since g of x is equal to f at x plus 1 minus f of x, then g of x is the rate of change of f of x. We are told that h of x is equal to g at x plus 1 minus g of x. Well, just like f at x plus 1 minus f at x is the rate of change of f, I need you to understand that g at x plus 1 minus g of x is the rate of change of g of x. So h of x is the rate of change of g of x, just like g of x is the rate of change of f of x. Step 4 is to recognize that since g of x is the rate of change of f of x, and h of x is the rate of change of g of x, then h of x is also the rate of change of the rate of change of f of x. Step 5 is to finish the problem. We are told that h of x is negative 6. This means that the rate of change of the rate of change of f of x is equal to negative 6. This also means that the rate of change of g of x is negative 6 because h of x is also equal to the rate of change of g of x. Based on these two facts, we need to figure out which of these statements is true. g and f always have negative slope, g and f are concave down, the graph of f always has a negative slope, or g is decreasing and the graph of f is concave down. Once again, let's use this chart that I've been trying to get you to memorize. Since the rate of change of g is a constant, that means g is linear. Also, since the rate of change of g is negative, that means g is decreasing. And since the rate of change of the rate of change of f is negative, that means f of x is concave down. Now all we have to do is match this information to one of the answers. The answer that best matches what we found is d, which says that g is decreasing and f of x is concave down. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.